There are many instruments that use rotary valves, most commonly French horns, as well as tubas and trombones with attachments. Lesser known are some trumpets, flugelhorns, and the Wagner tuba. Oiling a piston type valve is different than oiling a rotary type valve. A piston can be accessed by the player, is visible, and there is only one location requiring the oil. The parts that require oiling on a rotary valve cannot be seen. The valve is not removed by the player, and there are multiple locations that require specific types of oil. Most people are unaware that inadequate or improper oiling of a rotor may contribute to premature wear, affect performance, and lead to costly repairs. The purpose of this video is to show best practices and proven methods for what to use and how to lubricate correctly any instrument with a rotary valve assembly. There are three areas that require specific lubrication, and there are two types of oil that should be used. This is the way to oil rotors. Shown here is a horn. The process and locations are the same for any rotary valve instrument with only slight variations on the others. First oil needs to get to the inside where the air travels and the valve makes contact with the casing. Use manufacturer or synthetic oil that is labeled and intended for rotor valves. Do not use piston oil. It is too thin. Does not provide the lubrication necessary. Pull the tuning slides for each of the corresponding valves, depressing each one's lever as it is removed, and set them on a soft, clean cloth. Then, one at a time, take a slide held in this manner and put approximately four to six drops of rotor oil in a tube. Then, holding the horn with the open tubes toward the floor, put the slide back into place on the horn. Be sure to depress the lever corresponding to that slide so air pressure does not build up within the valve. This is suggested so that debris containing contaminants and abrasives are not drawn into the valve area by suction when the tubes are inserted. Then turn the horn so the oil runs down onto the valves inside. Depress all the levers up and down and distribute the oil around the area. Do this type of oiling each time the instrument is played, or daily. A valve really cannot be over-oiled. It just wastes the product and with no adverse effect to the valve itself. If a double horn is being oiled, find the slide that allows access to the fourth valve and drop oil in the tube closest. Note, on some models, where the fourth valve is past the third near the pinky ring, it's the third slide. Some will know these models as a Geier wrap, so the third and fourth valves will be oiled at the same time in this instance. Now the spindle bearings need to be oiled. There are two locations that require precise placement. The spindle bearings are like machine parts and require heavier oil. If spindle bearing oil cannot be obtained, woodwind key oil will work just fine as a start. An applicator with a small spout or a needle tip is required to access these areas while the valve is assembled. Note, it is highly recommended not to remove a rotary valve. They are very delicate, can easily be damaged, and require specialized tools. These pictures are shown to illustrate where oiling is required and the parts that are prone to wear. The first location for this type of oil is under the cap. Remove a valve cap and look here. Depress the lever to see which parts are moving. This is where you want to place a few drops of this heavier oil. Once again, normal rotor oil or piston oil is too thin and does not lubricate well enough for these areas that wear against each other and are prone to becoming noisy. Depress the levers back and forth while in this position to distribute the oil around the area. Do the same for all the valves and replace the caps after each. Next, hold the horn in this position and depress a lever. See where the arm turns by the string? Look for this small space below the arm. Look here. Between these parts is the long spindle bearing that was shown in the picture. It too needs this heavier oil and is also prone to wear and becoming noisy. Place oil right here. 
and move the lever so it turns and distributes oil where needed. This is the best way to get oil to the spindle bearing while the instrument is completely assembled. Do this on each valve at the same location. If there is excess around the area, just wipe it away with a soft cloth. Now, both these areas, shown earlier under the cap, and now near the lever, should be oiled every three days or once a week as needed. So, to summarize, remember, piston oil is not appropriate for rotors. There are two types of oil used on rotary valves, rotor oil and spindle bearing oil. To get the rotor oil to the rotor body, four to six drops of oil are placed inside each valve slide tube. Reinsert each slide. Then rotate the horn to channel the oil to the rotor body. Oil each rotor every day the instrument is played. Spindle bearing oil is placed between the moving parts of the spindles, here and here. Move the rotors to distribute the oil. Oil your spindles three times per week, once per week at the least. That does it. If oiling is done for these areas as described, and the instrument is taken to a professional repair technician at least once a year for a thorough cleaning and evaluation, Rotary valves should work well and last a very long time with great satisfaction and enjoyment by the player. If you need to find a technician to work on your instrument, a good place to start is at www.napbert.org, the website of the National Association of Professional Band Instrument Repair Technicians. NAPBERT exists to give its member technicians the forms to continually grow and enhance their skills. At their website you will find information on selecting a repair shop, as well as NAPBERT's tech locator, where you can find a NAPBERT member technician in your immediate area. If you are interested in becoming a technician, there is also information on schools that teach band instrument repair. We appreciate your interest in caring for your rotary valve instrument. We hope this information is useful to you. Thank you, and enjoy making music.